Hi and welcome to my C Sharp Web Driver video series. In this video, we will look at waiting. We will look at how to wait on a page until something has happened. We will see why it might be necessary to wait and under what conditions you would use waiting methods. And we will also write methods which allow us to wait on a page. So let's get started. We already have a really basic code to begin with. We have an instance of driver, we have a setup method which basically creates an instance of Firefox and navigates to our test room web app. And we have a teardown method to close the browser. So before we do this, let's discuss a quick basic web scenario. So to do that, we're just going to navigate to our Java test site first. So the scenario that we're going to automate is quite simply clicking on the contact link and then when we're on the contact page, we're just going to do nothing. So, so that, that would be it. Just basically clicking on the contact link, nothing else. Now you might say that seems like a really basic scenario and it is. The focus of this video is to show you how to wait for something, how to basically do nothing and expect to have full control return to you for the driver the only thing you're doing is basically waiting for an amount of time or waiting for something to happen so why is it important for you to be able to wait in web driver so this will require some explanation first of all when you're writing tests ideally you shouldn't really be waiting because by waiting what you're actually doing is extending the time it takes for a test to run Traditionally, that is almost anti-test in that test should run as quickly as possible. You really shouldn't wait for something. If you end up waiting for something, then what you're doing is basically extending the time of a test. What a test is supposed to do is basically run as quickly as possible and give you a result. But if you end up basically waiting for something to happen, regardless of whether you get the result or not, you are almost going against the nature of a test. This said, sometimes it is required that you do wait. Sometimes you just have to wait for something to happen. And that is much more true today compared to a couple of years ago. For instance, today, or rather in the past when we had web pages, many web pages were built using static information such as this. Today, however, there are a lot of fancy pages which do a lot of fancy things. For instance, when you navigate to, say, like a flash page, for instance, things load over time. They don't just instantly load like a static page would. Basically, you've got dynamic content loading on dynamic pages. So if you're effectively trying to, say, automate a test against those types of pages, you are essentially forced to wait until something is visible. So it is for those conditions that you may need to wait for something to happen. For instance, let's just say another condition where you've clicked on a download link and for security purposes, let's just say the download link isn't supposed to pop up immediately. There is supposed to be a delay. It is the design of that web application that there is a delay. You would want to therefore need to actually wait that amount of time to check that the pop-up doesn't appear within a set amount of time and the pop-up does appear after a set amount of time. So on some occasions, waiting is a required aspect or rather it is a function that you might actually need to test. So waiting in a test isn't ideally the best thing to do. However, waiting in a web driver test sometimes is necessary because that is what you're trying to test. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So I'm just going to write a basic test. We know that to select the contact link, we know that it has an ID attribute with a value of un contact underscore ID. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So 
So let's just make sure this works first. So I'm going to save it, get the project. And I'm just going to use any unit to run it. Okay, so nothing too complicated, it works. So the first method I want to show you is basically where we basically wait for a certain amount of time. We're not going to effectively check against any condition as such. We just want to say, I want the page to wait for however long I want, in seconds, preferably. So to do this, all I'm going to do is basically write a method which just forces a thread to sleep for an amount of time and then wake up. So I'm going to say public void wait on page. Uh, let's part in an integer uh, seconds. And I'm going to say system dot threading dot thread dot sleep. I'm going to pass in the parameter times by a thousand. So what's happening here? Basically, all I'm doing is just forcing a thread to sleep, which is another way of saying do nothing, or in our case, sleep, for the amount of seconds that we pass in. This method basically takes in a parameter of milliseconds so obviously a thousand milliseconds times by an integer that we pass in let's just say in this case two two times a thousand milliseconds is two thousand milliseconds or two seconds so if you pass in a number here what will happen is it will basically end up creating a thread waiting for that amount of time and then relinquishing the thread and giving us back control of the driver so if i said something like wait on page for let's just say five seconds and then run this this will basically end up waiting on that page for five seconds so let's just save and rerun so if you now notice the page actually remained open for five seconds so this is one way of forcing your page to do nothing for a set amount of time. Now this is a sensible approach, but it isn't a good approach. Why? Well, in this case we can let our page wait for however long we want it to wait. We can define however long we want. So we've got some control over the amount of time to wait, but we don't have any control over the amount of time we want it to wait based on some action or some rule so let me explain what that means in this case we're saying wait on the page for five seconds but that's it that's what we're saying wait on the page for five seconds not one second or two seconds five seconds what that also means is because we're saying wait on the page for five seconds let's just say we're trying to wait for a condition to occur if that condition occurs within five seconds let's just say it occurred on the second second or on two seconds it will still end up waiting for another three seconds, effectively wasting that time doing nothing when it could have gone off and done the check or it could have carried on with our test. So this is a good approach because this lets us wait for a certain amount of time. But it is not a good approach if, let's say, whatever we're trying to do has already occurred and then the remaining time is left doing nothing. So what we want to do is basically change this method so that this ends up waiting only until something happens and then gives us back control of the page and to do that we can utilize some methods that webdriver provides us with in this case what we're going to do is say public iweb element uh, wait for page until element is visible And we're going to pass in two parameters. We're going to pass in a by parameter, and it's going to be a locator, and an int max seconds. And here we're going to say 
new web driver wait and in here we're going to pass in our instance of driver and we're also going to say time span from seconds and we're going to say max seconds Uh, and we're going to say until an expected condition but in this case let's just say element exists by our locator Uh, and let's go ahead and just return this. So here I've got some red lines because basically you can't resolve that object or you can't find the namespace. That's quite simple to resolve. All I have to just right click and then just say resolve and grab the necessary namespace. And I'll do the same thing for element exists. Okay, so what is happening here? Well, here what I'm actually saying is I will pass in some by object. So in this case, what I will basically pass in is something similar to this, where I pass in an actual identifier to an object. And I will also pass it a maximum amount of seconds. And this will become important very quickly. What I will use is this mechanism called the web driver wait, which waits for an amount of time, so in this case max seconds. So let's just say five seconds. And it will use the driver to do the waiting. But this is the key part. It will only wait only until something has happened. So in this case, we're saying wait for five seconds until an expected condition, in this case element exists is visible so what this is actually saying is i would give you an object and i want you to look for that object if you find it let me know do not wait for the second to expire or to phrase it in a more sensible way see if you can find the object that i have passed you within the maximum amount of time if you find it give me the object do not wait the maximum amount of time so if I were to use this method, I could say So what this will now do is basically wait on the page until the element is visible. It will try to find this element within this amount of time and if it finds it then it'll return it right there and then it won't force the driver to wait for five seconds it will force the driver to wait for a maximum of five seconds so the difference between this method or rather the difference between this method and this method is this method will execute for five seconds and it will stay within this method for five seconds this method would have us stay for a maximum of five seconds so if it finds the element before then it will return control back to our driver and we can carry on so let's save and run so notice this time the page did not wait for five seconds but it was able to find the object in five seconds so by utilizing this method here for any objects we have on a page which loads say after a certain amount of time and let's just say we don't know what that amount of time is we vaguely think it's somewhere between 10 to 20 seconds for instance we can just set a max time to 20 seconds and then if the object loads within seconds we will have our object within seconds and if it takes up to 20 seconds then that is what the object will do so it gives your test a little bit more robustness. It doesn't help in the time it takes for your test to run, but it does help in trying to reduce the amount of time your test takes to run for objects which are time dependent.
And that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.